Hello everyone, Di here and welcome to Firewatch. Firewatch is a single player first person mystery set in 1989 Wyoming where you play as Henry, a gentleman who retreated from his messy life to work as a fire lookout in the Wyoming wilderness and your only emotional lifeline is the person on the other end of a handheld radio. We're going to start a new game. Campo Santo presents in cooperation with Panic Inc. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. That's a long time ago. You see Julia. Ooh, Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. Let's go approach her. I'm drunk. So what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She wants to buy me a cheeseburger. So she flags down a waiter and one week later, I'm her boyfriend. Aren't I a lucky duck? Nope. Let's pick up this backpack. Look at this elevator. This doesn't sound like elevator music. Ooh. Is this my, is this my truck? Truck bed, load gear. Wow. Just throw that backpack in there. Why didn't that go in the front seat? You date for every year. She drives you absolutely nuts, but it's great. Isn't that how all relationships are? You move in, you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. Of course she does. She's not satisfied with my cats. There's a scruffy oversized beagle. Julia is in love. Well, good for Julia. She wants to bring it to, with her to class. Why would you bring a dog to class? What are you taking in school? There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Doesn't matter. His name's Mayhem. Mayhem is an excellent dog. Of course he is. I picked him. He loves wrestling with you in the park and goes with Julia on her runs. Good running, Julia. Even though he's too big to bring to school, Julia loves him all the same. She better. God. That'd be a terrible reason not to love your dog. 1979. You talk out on the deck, it's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart, <laughs> or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have a couple idiots. You guys are talking about kids, like, four years later? Christ. That would be pretty good. I'd like to have kids. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like... Really? That's a proposal? <laughs> These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably just best that their parents are hitched. <laughs> what a great way to get married. Hey, I don't want to fuck up our kids later, so maybe you should pop the question. Like, jeez. <laughs> Two forks. Look at this map. Oh, learn to live with bears. Thoroughfare trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. No fireworks and do not forget to check in. Where do I... I'm in here. I thought I was just gonna fly fireworks off. Look at these trees. Oh, it's dark again. 1980. Five years after we've met. It's Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angry around the minute. Why am I getting angry? She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets fight. I ignore her. Let's, let's be realistic here. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. That's pretty much what I would do. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans from her research. She draws all over the place you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man, or you frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. <laughs> Julie was right. You are really pretty. I'm a pretty little girl. 
Let's go, Julia. What? Dang, must be Baldi jumping from all the way up there. Oh, my eyes. The scenery here is like, wow, two forks. Space bar to jump over obstruct. That wasn't a jump. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking mayhem at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. Did we not ever have those kids? Someone tries to mug me? Mayhem runs away. May me moo fuck the dog, Julia says. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. He beat his goddamn face and you goddamn right. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Yeah, I probably would. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Well, that's nice. At least you got a better view. Plans to- Oh, look! Plans to have his kids get waylaid by work. Work's always getting in the way. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job. Agree if she commutes back and forth. Why don't I go to Connecticut? You tell her that this means that you two won't have a family. She says that's bullshit, and she's totally right. Yes, yeah, she would be. She asks if her taking the job means you won't come with her. You say yes again. Bullshit. But she decides not to take it. Why wouldn't I go to Connecticut? That doesn't make any sense. I would go. Julia is asked to leave Boulder on a paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for boring books that were important to her research. Dang, Julia. Got some attitude going on. She was found crying in the stairwell. Aww. Julia, I love you so much. Don't cry. Uh, clearly I'm gonna make macaroni and drink some wine. That fixes everything. You watch Dallas on TV and sleep together on the couch. Damn straight, that's what I would do. Oh. Look, guys. We keep journals. Oh my god. <laughs> she drew me like one of her French girls. <laughs> Mayhem is getting older. He's got silver hair down his back and slows down at night. You and Julia walk him to the bar to see your friends and it feels like nothing has changed. Julia goes back to the university. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Uh-oh. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. The other days... The other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad's at the door. You tell her family they're crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care at home. It sits with you for a couple months. You decide to move her into a full-time facility. You are determined to take care of her yourself. I sure am. I love Julia. I'd do anything for Julia. Wow, that's... I don't know. I really hope this whole game is not that emotional. <laughs> that hits home for me. Wow, that's a big buck. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. 
You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter. Looks like I'm picking up a drinking habit. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in, fr in front of the bedroom door. You trust that she sleeps like a rock. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. One time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights of the week. You look forward to seeing those nights. One night, you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a .10 and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. I'd have to call somebody. <laughs> Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. They tell you Julia's coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer's coming and you see an ad in the paper. And I take it. Why didn't I go to Australia with Julia? Why did I just let Julia leave with her parents? I thought I loved Julia. Enter the lookout tower. Oh, there's red lights going on up there. Oh, we're gonna walk up these stairs. Man, these are some ragged looking stairs. Boop, 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 ba -doo. boop, 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 Hope Julia's okay. It's been nine years. Open the door. Turn on the power. Wood stove, stove, water jug, map table, generator switch. Bam! We have light! Whoop. Oh. Hold left shift to activate the radio. Hello? Hello? Hello, Two Forks Tower. <laughs> Select. Oh. Oh! <laughs> um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. Hey there, Delilah. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Yep, yeah, bitch. That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... What, sleep? Forever? Can I? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. I don't really want to take a stab at you. You've killed three ex-husbands, no one back home. You're rebelling against okay, mom. Um, you're probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids, by the sound of your voice, at least 15 years ago. Ooh. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? Well, she also says I fuck immature men. <laughs> in my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? Wow, hey, Delilah. Now. Just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh. Is that it? Close. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. Apparently, Delilah doesn't understand that I really want to go to bed. Well, that's going to be it for our intro video. We got a little bit of backstory when it comes to Henry and... In our next episode, we're going to cover day one of our Firewatch. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and leave a comment below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.